God, you are here in this place this morning. You are here in this place right now. We welcome you, King of glory. We welcome you, God of glory. We welcome you, Father of glory. We welcome you, Spirit of glory. Lord, we welcome you in all of your glory. Come and do what only you can do. We yield to you in this place this morning, lifting up our hearts and lifting up our hands. Lord, we surrender to who you are. Mm. You are glorious. You are glorious. <laughs> you are glorious. Just begin to let your spirit connect with the spirit of glory in this place right now. Just begin to pray in the spirit. Just begin to sing in the spirit in this place right now. Shalomonde, la masele, boroba, sele monde, le men, do lobo, salamonde, le bique, le selamondo, la masele, monde, la mondo, la mande, qui shalamonde, la masile, mende, la mondo, la masile. Roba salama se le men le men do la ma se le men do la ma se Salamando la man de le men de le men de le men que le men do lo man da la man de le men se le men do bote Salamande le men de le mo salamande Salama si le te le men de le man de le mo romando le le Si la mo si le 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 si le ne ne la na na la mo so le me ne le mo do ramasa. Sa la mo si le te le mo do la mo de le mo si. Sa la mo de la mo de la mo si la mo do la mo si le me de le mo da la mo ramasa la mo si le. Si la mo da la mo si la mo do la mo si la mo do la mo si la mo da la mo si. Come on, just begin to encourage yourself in the Lord right now. Just stirring up yourself in your most holy faith right now. Stir yourself up in the Spirit of God, the Spirit of glory, opening more and more and more and more and more and more and more. Opening more and more and more and more and more and more and more. Shalom, Masile, Masile, Masala, Masile, Mendele, Mendele, Mendola, Masa. Reshela, Masala, Mendola, Masile, Re, 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 No Masile. Yala, Masile. Shili, Masile, Mungo, Romanda, La Masile, Re, 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 Re. Lord, we welcome you in your glory. We welcome your heavenly reality. The divine supernatural being released in the natural realms right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. We welcome your heavenly angels, the hosts of heaven gathered around. We welcome the moving, the moving, the moving, the moving of your glory realm. Open hearts, connect with an open heaven. <laughs> open hearts, connecting right now with an open heaven. Open heaven realities. There are no limits, no limits, no limits, no limits, no limits. All things are possible for them who believe. All things are possible with God. Nothing is too difficult. Do not be distracted. Do not be dismayed. 
do not be discouraged for there's a greater way there's a greater way it's in the glory 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 the door has been open for you the door is wide open for you the portal is open just step on through step on through step on through step on through don't hold back but step on through don't hold back just step on through and see what God will do what God will do what God will do what God will There's miracles for you, unlimited miracles for you, unlimited abundance, unlimited provision for spirit, soul, and body, unlimited miracles for you. Salamandele le mo sola mandele mandele mo cora ma si le mendi Shalom sure si la mambre si la mandele bo pros limi la ma se la ma cobro sande Open hearts and open vision. 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 And open vision. And open vision. May God grant you an open vision in this place, in your spirit, in your heart. An open vision of the open heaven. Being enlarged to see, to know, to perceive, to recognize, to agree, to step in partnership with what God is doing, not a step ahead and not a step behind in divine alignment wholly synchronized mm. I want to move with the move of glory I want to move with the move of glory I want to move with the move of glory. I want to move with the move of glory. Come on, say it. I want to move with the move of glory. I want to move with the move of glory. Yeah. I want to move with the move of glory. I want to move with the move of glory. Come on, decree right now, say, I'm moving with the glory. I'm moving with the glory, the glory, glory. I'm moving with the glory. Moving with the glory as the glory moves in me. I'm moving with the glory. I'm moving. I'm moving with the glory as the glory moves in me. I'm moving with the glory. I'm moving with the glory. As the glory moves in me, I'm moving with the glory. I'm moving, 
I'm moving with the glory as the glory moves in me. I'm moving with the glory. I'm moving with the glory as the glory moves in me. Like a wheel within a wheel. Like a wheel within a wheel. Like a wheel within a wheel. The glory moves in me. Like a wheel within a wheel. Like a wheel within a wheel. Like a wheel within a wheel. The glory moves in me. And I'm moving in the glory and the glory moves in me and i'm moving in the glory and the glory moves in me i'm moving in the glory and the glory moves in me i'm moving in the glory and the glory moves in me Cooperation agreement. <laughs> Cooperation agreement. Agreement. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it already is in the heavenly realm. That my realm right here, God, the territory, the domain, the place that you have given for me to occupy. Let it be so fully immersed, encompassed about, filled with your glory. Heaven on earth, glory in the natural. God, I'm not waiting for your glory in another time and another place. But I recognize that you have said that you will fill this space with your glory. So I give you permission. I'm in agreement. Cooperation, partnership. For the children of God are led by the Spirit of God, the Spirit of glory. The children of God are led by the Spirit of God the spirit of glory, the children of God, the sons and daughters of the Most High are led. By your glory, your glory, your glory, your glory. This morning, I want you to stay open to the glory of God that is being released in this place. You can be seated if you'd like to, to sit, but I want to open the word because I really do believe that the Lord desires to take us from glory to glory in this place, even today. As you hear the words of scripture, I want you to embrace them not as words from a page, but I want you to embrace them as words that are being sent from heaven into your heart. And I want you to recognize that God is no respecter of persons. 
In other words, what he's done for one, he will do for another. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We know that. And God says in Malachi that I am the Lord and I change not. In other words, the ways of God are eternal. Lord, let the eternal ways of your glory become our ways this morning. May our hearts be open to new things, new realities, new dimensions, new realms that you desire to open up to us. I want you to open your Bible to Isaiah chapter 6. And we're going to look at this prophetic text through the eyes of glory. In verse 1, it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, in a vision I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and the skirts of his train filled the most holy part of the temple. Isaiah is speaking here of this most magnificent vision that he had, and what I think is so wonderful about it is that he said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne. In other words, when the kings of the earth pass away, the king of glory <laughs> is still seated in power, victory, and authority. When the things of the earth seem to fade, there is a reality in glory that's still available for us that has not changed. When the things of the earth change and there, there's so much chaos and there's conflict and there's confusion and there's disappointment, God says, lift up your eyes a little bit higher and see, receive a vision of the glory. The glory. We can receive a vision of the glory. And we should. When we read through the scriptures, we realize that Ezekiel had a vision of God's glory. He saw the heavenly realm. We read about Isaiah and his visions of the heavenly realm. We see John, the revelator. He said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Whew. So I say today is the Lord's day. Ha. Huh. I give every day <laughs> to the Lord so that he can have his way on his day in me. John the Revelator caught up to see the glories of heaven. And what I think is so wonderful about all of this is that the Apostle Paul, in the authority of the apostolic anointing that he carried, he gave authorization for believers to open up their spirits to behold something that's greater, a vision that's deeper, something more powerful that goes beyond the limitations of the earth. So often we are led and directed by our feelings, led and directed by what we see, led and directed by what others have told us here on the earth. And yet God says, my children are those that are led by my spirit. I want to be led by the spirit. It's not good enough just to know about the glory. God's wanting us to experience his glory. A man with an experience huh, is a force to be reckoned with. A man with an argument is always at the mercy of a man with an experience. <laughs> so God says, experience my glory. Experience my glory. Experience my glory. In the glory, God will speak to us. God will bring clarity. 
give direction in the glory God will show us things to come again John the Revelator Revelation chapter 4 he said behold I saw a door standing open in the heavenly realm and a voice just like a trumpet behind me saying come up here and I will show you things to come a few weeks ago believers all over the world celebrated Pentecost weekend we celebrated the the commemoration of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the earth the church being born in the book of Acts on the day of Pentecost. It's amazing. I was ministering on Thursday night, May 25th, just outside of Phoenix, Arizona in Chandler. And the spirit of glory came upon me and there was an utterance of tongues and then there was an interpretation of tongues that came. And the Lord spoke very, very clearly through a word of prophecy and I want to read it to you this morning because I believe it's important for where we are going as the body of Christ and what God has prepared for us in his glory. The Lord said this, there is great power being released in this hour. Oh, yes, this is the day and this is the time when I am pouring out of my spirit and I'm pouring out of my new wine. Oh, yes, for you will need this power for that which you will encounter. And you will need this joy to get you through those troubled times that are on the horizon. Do not say, oh, but I'm worried and I'm not sure if I'll succeed. For surely by my spirit, you will prosper and you will go forth and accomplish that which I have sent you to do. Amen. Do not be afraid of the forces before you. For that which is behind you is even greater than you know. Oh yes, this is the hour when I have already assembled my angel armies round about you. I have set in preparation those angelic warriors that will begin to battle on your behalf. Do not say, well God, I feel unprepared. For surely my spirit within you has given you all that you need. Rely on my spirit, lean into me. And watch and see how I will begin to move you. Rest in my plans that I give to you, for I will cause you to navigate on roads that the enemy does not know about. And I will cause you to move through tunnels that cannot be seen with human eyes. And I will begin to open up portals in my spirit for you to travel from one place to another place. Oh yes, there shall be a sense of security for those that are found in me. For even as you've heard about my secret place. Surely in the days ahead, you will begin to dwell in my secret places for it shall be a secret from the enemy and from those that would try to come against you. Oh, I shall begin to hold you in my glory in a new and wonderful way. I shall begin to hold you in my glory in a new and and wonderful way I shall begin to hold you in my glory in a new and wonderful way allow me to fill you with my spirit allow me to pour my spirit upon you within you and around you surrounding you with my Holy Spirit power says the Lord hallelujah somebody give him a shout of praise There are several things that I recognized when I begin to go back into this word and look it over and re-examine what the Lord 
spoke. Listen, when God speaks, we need to listen. When he speaks once, I mean, listen, he's speaking. When God speaks twice, you better get ready. Because it's confirmation. When he speaks three times, what are you waiting for? Right? So we're hearing the Lord speak in this day and we're hearing the voice of glory come. And he's speaking about a posture that we need to make as people of God. And the posture isn't you better work hard or you got to struggle more or you, you better stockpile or you, you better. The word of God is we need to learn how to lean, how to yield, how to surrender how to flow because if we'll learn how to flow with him he has everything taken care of for us if we'll lean into him in him we find all that we need and i was so taken by this portion that said i shall begin to hold you in my glory hold you and i begin to visualize what that looks like god holding us in his glory. He said he'd hold us in his glory in a new and wonderful way. That means there's going to be a lot of wonders. It's wonderful. Right? We're going to see a lot of wonders in the glory in the days ahead. Um, when we're talking about glory, I think sometimes there can be misconception about what it is, what it looks like. And so I want to read something real quick out of my book, Moving in Glory Realms, in regards to what the glory is. Since we're talking about glory, let's get all on one page about what the glory is. The glory is not a mystical force that's floating around every once in a while, just going to kind of fall on you. Um, although there is a moving in the glory. Uh, the glory is not something to be scared of, to be fearful of. As believers, we must embrace the glory. Of God. Some things in the spirit cannot be grasped by faith alone. Do you know that? God gives us faith and we got to use it. But faith is the beginning. And faith is what connects us to the anointing or the power of God. But even the anointing comes to destroy yokes. And there are things that the anointing destroys and things that the anointing does. And the anointing really speaks of the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the operation of the, the supernatural operation of the Holy Spirit within us and moving through us. But the glory is different. That's why we must learn how to bring forth the glory. Faith says God is present. This is the kingdom. The anointing says God rewards. That's the power. But the glory says, I am. Do you see the difference? God is the glory and the glory is God. The glory is God's fullness. It's his manifest presence, his character, his nature, his ability, his provision, the weight and splendor of his majesty. It's the essence of his beauty. The glory is all that he is and all that he has. Everything about God is glorious. And he wants us to know him in the fullness of his glory. Because he is the God of glory. And so there's things that can happen in the glory that cannot happen in any other dimension because there are things that happen in God that cannot happen in any other realm. You understand? That's why, the, that's why Jesus is the hope of glory that lives on the inside of us. And we recognize with Jesus, we have everything we need. You might look at some natural situation, circumstances that you're going through and say, it's impossible. You might write it off. You might say, well, I'm never going to get through this or I'm never going to recover from that situation. How could God ever restore this relationship? How could I ever get the financial deliverance I need? Well, it looks like my body is just going downhill. That's what the doctor said. 
And yet in the glory, it's a different realm because it's God. And wherever God shows up, change begins to happen. Whenever God comes on the scene, something begins to change. Whew. Lift up your hands this morning. Say, God, I know you're here. And so I'm the change that's happening right now. <laughs> God, I'm the change that's changing. God, I'm the one that's yielded to your glory. Come and do what you need to do in and through me. Amen. So like even when it comes to moving in the glory, we have ideas of what moving looks like. We have ideas of of how God can do what he needs to do, how he needs to move things into position, how he can rearrange things. Let go of all your preconceived ideas. Let go of it. Because most of our ideas are limited by time. And yet in the realm of glory, it is the realm of eternity. Does God exist in time? Yes. But he also exists outside of time. He is all in all. Whew. So there's things that God will begin to speak to you about in the glory, even in regards to movement, progression, going from glory to glory. What that looks like in the glory is much different than what it looks like in the earth. I remember quite a few years ago that Janet and I, we had just purchased a new home. And the way that this home was, it was a condo and there was a carport in the basement and then there was a main floor and then there was a, an upper uh, story in that, that condominium. And I was downstairs in the carport and I was kind of, there was a tool shed on one side and on the other side of the carport, this was the stairs that led up to the next level. And these stairs were very hard tiled stairs. And uh, Janet was carrying boxes up and down, something to do with our movement, uh, you know, moving into the, the house. And I was on the other side of the carport. I was organizing my tool shed and, and working away in there. All at once, I heard a loud scream. And when I looked, Janet came tumbling down these stairs and landed at the bottom of these stairs in our carport. Now, you might think, okay, well, you know, just pray for her and she'll have to just get better. Well, in that moment, the glory began to work on the inside of me and literally gave me something to speak. And without even thinking about it, I looked across the carport and I said, I take you back 15 minutes in the name of Jesus. Now, when I said it, it surprised me. Because I had never considered saying something like that. I had never done it before. I said, I take you back. What was I was taking authority over time. In the glory, you can take authority over time. So many people feel bound by time, restricted by time, feel like time is running out. You need to speak to time, say time and space, get out of my face. I was made for mercy and grace. <laughs> Begin to command time to work for you. Now, I, I don't, I don't want to get all the way into this this morning, but I will say this much. That when God set the stars and the moon and the sun in place in the sky, he said that they were set for times and for days and for seasons. God set up the clock, you understand, in the heavens above. And when he looked at it all, he didn't say, this is really bad and you're going to suffer by this. He looked at it and he said, it is good. Whew. You realize in the Garden of Eden, 
mankind was given authority. Do you, do you recognize that? Jesus came as a second Adam to restore to us what had been lost because of the curse of sin. Some may say in the glory through Christ Jesus, I have been restored in right relationship with God, the glory to walk in the authority that God has given me. Okay, so Janet looks up at me. She's on the floor on the other side of the carport. She looks up at me and this is what she says. What just happened? You know why she didn't know what happened? I took her back 15 minutes. 15 minutes prior, she wasn't sitting on the floor. So she looked at me and she said, what just happened? I said, you just fell down the stairs, but I just took you back 15 minutes. There's not going to be one bruise, not one scrape on your body. I want you to get up. And so I came over and I helped pick her up off the floor. And in the past, before we understood the power of our words, I used to call Janet, Janny Banani. Because she would bruise so easily like a banana. Like I, if I would just hug her too hard, she'd have bruises on her body from me just hugging her. So she was very susceptible to bruising. Anyway, I share that to say, when she got up off the floor, not only was there no pain in her body, there was no scratch in her body, there was no bruising on her body, there were no effects of the fall. The devil's been lying to some of you folk and making you think that you have to keep some effects of the fall in your life. But I'm not only just for you, but for your generations, for your children and your children's children. Oh, I'm telling you, the curse has been broken. There's glory, 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 glory. Okay, now I'm getting too excited. I'm letting my Pentecostal self out of the box. Okay, praise God. Hallelujah. So I say there's glory. There's glory. There's glory. Years ago, I recorded a, a song that the Lord had given me. Um, no limitations in the spirit. No limitations in the glory realm. I think some of you have probably heard that song. Well, I recorded that song, No Limits Remix, with Becca Shea. And Becca's here <laughs> this morning in the second row. Becca, stand up real quick so everyone can wave at you. <laughs> She's doing a live. Okay. Well, there. We love the Shockley family. They come from Nashville. Uh, we've known Joy since she was in her mommy's tummy. So it's, it's a great blessing to have you all here. I sure love you. Grace and Hope is in the, the other room back there. And Shock is a tremendously anointed producer in Nashville. And he works on a lot of different uh, projects, albums. They collaborate so well together, Shock and Becca. Um, but he's also done some stuff with us, uh, produced my Christmas album almost 10 years ago. Anyway, okay, that's a whole other story. Uh, but it's a great blessing to have you guys here. We sure love you. Um, I want to go back in here to Isaiah chapter 6. Because there's so many possibilities in the glory. There's so many things that God wants to give us in his glory. And I think in many ways, when we read Isaiah's account in Isaiah 6, some people would say, well, this is, you know, this was Isaiah's encounter. And you can't preach this like it's available for other people. But I beg to, di I beg to differ. I beg to differ because I know that every time a testimony is given, 
it opens up a doorway in the spirit for those who have ears to hear and a spirit to receive. It opens up a door for the hungry folk, the thirsty ones to step on in and walk into another realm than what they've known up to that point. And I don't know how you read your Bible or what people have told you about how you should read your Bible. Whew. But when I read my Bible, I read it as the word of God. I read it as the prophetic rhema of God being spoken to me, that the spirit of God that breathed this word is breathing on me today and doing something through his word that's opening up realms of glory. So I read Isaiah's testimony of his vision and I realize there's visions for me. I read about him standing before the throne in heaven and recognize I can stand before the throne of heavenly glory. Not because of my own good works or my own ability, but because of the blood of Jesus that has made a way. So in Isaiah Chapter 6, verse 2, it says, Above him stood the seraphim. Whew. These are fiery, heavenly beings. We might call them angels, but they're a class, seraphim. Seraph would be the individual being. Seraphim is the group of them. They're the burning ones, the bright and shining ones. Filled with flames of fire. They burn before the throne of God. Wow. I was studying this scripture a few months ago. And in my spirit, I saw a vision of these seraphs. And I saw the fire shooting up. And I saw the fire shooting down. And I saw the wings that were over their faces filled with fire. And I saw the wings that were over their feet filled with fire. And I saw the wings that were behind them that moved them filled with fire. It was orange and it was yellow. And I saw the blue, the intensity of the heat, the flame, the burning flames, the burning ones. And Isaiah had this vision. He said, each had six wings, with two each covered his own face, with two each covered his feet, and with two each flew. And one cried to another saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Wow. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of where there is glory. There are angels. And where there are angels, there is glory. Would you believe there are some churches that don't want to talk about angels? Because they're they're fearful that if you talk about angels, you'll start worshiping angels. How dumb can you get and still breathe? I mean, really. Why would you want to worship an angel when you can worship the one who created? The God of glory. God of all creation. He is holy. When we talk about the angelic host, we must understand their ministry. Their first and primary ministry Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the Lord of angel armies. Holy are you. Their first and primary ministry is worship unto the Lord. And we, when we get caught up in glory, and as God allows us 
to have angelic encounters, to see the glories of heaven, all the various things that are in heaven. When I've seen the angels, I recognize it's the angels are a reflection of a dimension or an aspect of who he is. You realize that the angels were created by God, right? And you realize that the master artist always puts a part of who he is into his creation. If we ignore these supernatural realities, we ignore much of what God is trying to show us in his glory. There's been times, and I'm not going to get into ministry about angels, but there are times when I've seen angels that are literally covered like gold, just uh, gold dust in the atmosphere, liquid gold pouring off of them, gold coins just shooting out everywhere. And it spoke to me of abundance, spoke to me of prosperity, spoke to me about the provision of God. I really, it's not that angel that's bringing the provision. They're simply the carriers. The provision doesn't come from angels. The provision comes from almighty God. Same with healing and other th aspects that we've seen. Oh, we must have a vision of the glory. Let God expand our, our understanding of his glory. Let the glory come so we can experience his glory. Isaiah goes on and he says, one cried to another in verse three, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the thresholds shook at the voice of him who cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Then said, I woe is me, for I am undone and ruined because I'm a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then in verse six, then flew one of the seraphim heavenly beings to me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from off of the altar. And with it, he touched my mouth and said, behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity and guilt are taken away and your sin is completely atoned for and forgiven. Now, there's several things happening in this vision. There's several things happening in this glory encounter that are positioning Isaiah for his call to do what he was created or born to do. And I want to say this about the glory and the importance of God's glory in our lives. If we think for a moment that we can achieve or successfully accomplish what God has created us to accomplish without his spirit, without his glory, without his goodness, following our lives, filling us completely, then we are greatly mistaken. Because no matter what your call is, whether you're a business person, whether you're a lay worker, whether you, whether you are a, a minister, whatever your call or assignment is, and all of us have different assignments, all of it should be done to the glory of God, but also through the glory of God. Whew. The Lord gave me a prophetic word several years ago about creative glory, and I've had the opportunity to share that here. And it was really a word for this decade, for the 2020s going through. And the word is that no matter who you are, where you're from, what you've come through, that God desires for you to stay on the cutting edge in the days to come. When the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy, Jesus has come to give you life and to give it in abundance. 
that prophetic edge will keep you on the cutting edge. Flowing with the spirit of glory will enable you to do everything that you were born to do. Mm. Someone say, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. So faith is different than the anointing. The anointing is different than glory. The kingdom and the power and the glory, they all work together in cooperation. But what's so unique about the glory of God is that in many ways it is, and we see it through Isaiah's vision, the glory is a multi-sensory realm. I want you to write that down. The glory is a multi-sensory realm. When Isaiah gets caught up into this vision, the first thing he says is, I saw the Lord. Somebody say, open eyes. Open eyes. Open eyes in the glory. Open eyes in the glory. Now, I already mentioned it. That the apostle Paul, who himself had a very unusual encounter He actually said, I knew a man who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Well, yeah, he knew this man. It was him. You know, he was talking about himself. He just didn't want to brag. Paul was familiar with third heaven encounters. John was familiar. Ezekiel familiar. Isaiah familiar. And the apostle Paul now authorizes believers to see beyond the natural realm into the heavenly dimensions. In Ephesians chapter 19, verse 17, he says, For I always pray to God, the the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation of insight. Whew. Underline that right there. And I'm reading out the Amplified Classic edition if you're wondering what Bible I'm using this morning. Insight into mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of him. This is his prayer for believers. Somebody say, I'm a believer. And I want to have everything that a believer is authorized to have. By having the eyes of your heart flooded with light. Can you see that right there? The eyes of your spirit, man, open wide so that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you and how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints, his set apart ones. The inheritance of the saints and to find all the different aspects, pieces of the promises of that inheritance. You got to read through the word. If you got a problem with angels, then just read Hebrews chapter one, verse 14 over again. Answers the question. Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who are heirs of salvation? This is speaking about the inheritance that's available for believers. Whoo, thank you, Jesus. A few weeks ago, a minister had issue with this. He said, well, I don't think you, you can work with your angels because, you know, God sends the angels and, and uh, you, you, you can't activate angels or or ask the angels to be assigned on in a situation. And I said, well, then you don't believe the believer's authority. And you know what they say? They always say, well, where is that? There's nowhere in the Bible that says you can activate angels. Well, then you haven't read your Bible. You're just repeating what somebody else told you. Because the devil said a whole bunch of lies about who you are and what you can do and how far you can go with God and how much of God you can receive. Don't believe the lies of the enemy. 
Read the Bible. Read the word. Read it all from beginning to end. Yes. Yes. Come on. David was activating angels. Right. He had a revelation of the finished work. But listen, we are under the finished work. Well, you know, and then they, all the, well, you can't command angels because, I'm really going to hit this thing today. Anyway, you can't command angels because you, you're not over angels. Angels are over you. I said, where do you get that? Where do you come with that crazy idea? Well, the Bible says that he created man a little lower than the angels. No, it doesn't say that. It actually says, he could, I mean, literally go to your Bible, look up that translation, go all the way back to the original, to the Hebrew, and look it up. It says he created man lower than the Elohim. It's talking about himself. You are, yes, you are created lower than God. But you're not created lower than angels. How can we judge angels unless we have authority over them? Okay, anyway. <laughs> Verse 19 of Ephesians 19. And so that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believe as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named above every title that can be conferred, not only in this age and in this world, but also in the age and the world which are to come. Speaking about your eyes being open to See, you've been seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Begin to see it. Begin to see it. Just lift up your hands. Say, Lord, I ask that the eyes of my heart will be more fine-tuned to see with greater clarity than ever before. I want, want to see beyond the temporal, earthly things. And I desire to see in the realm of your glory. Thank you, Jesus. In the realm of your glory. In the realm of your glory. In the realm of your glory. Now, what's so wonderful about the glory realm is that there are moments, listen, our faith taps in to grab hold of the word of God. When our faith taps in, the power of God begins flowing. That's a, that's a connection point where the, the anointing, the power begins to flow. As the power of the spirit begins to flow and we are anointed then to operate and flow in all the gifts of the spirit. We utilize what God, we steward what the Holy Spirit is doing in and through us. To magnify God. When, when God anoints you, when, when you're given the ability to operate in spiritual gifts, this is not so that you can bring attention to yourself. This is so that you can bring greater attention to Jesus. That the world around you wakes up to the living reality of a Savior who bled and died and rose again to save them, to deliver them, to heal them, to restore them. And so we use the anointing to bring forth God's glory. And in doing that, the glory of God comes and settles upon us. And in so many ways, the glory, when we talk about the glory, the glory is very atmospheric in the sense that when I'm operating in the anointing, you know, and I'm going to lay hands on people in, in a, a situation, I might be able to lay hands on maybe 50 or 100 people. But when the glory comes and the glory settles, a thousand people, all at once, 2,000 people. I remember being in the Saitama Super Arena, ministering north of Tokyo, Japan, 36,000 people 
in that stadium and the glory just came and all at once and that made my job a whole lot easier because instead of wearing myself out I could rest in the ease of the glory the, the glory is a realm of rest somebody say rest ease it's the ministry of God upon his people. It's the difference between Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 2 was the power of God, the anointing being released. But Acts chapter 4, the crowds, the church had multiplied to such a degree. There was such a gathering that now the, the disciples had to say, Lord, you stretch out your hand to perform mighty signs and wonders. Through the holy name of Jesus. Whew. And he did it in his glory, his glory. And there are moments when we're in this glory in the, the rest and the ease. And even in the natural, we begin to see manifestations. I'm just checking my hands right now. I don't see any right now, but it's fine. Uh, at times there'll be gold dust or silver dust or a, a diamond dust that begins to pop out of the pores of our skin. There's times when oil will begin flowing from our hands. It's all signs that are speaking of the glory of God. One of the last times I was ministering in Japan, there was a woman that had come from Hokkaido, which is way up in the northern parts. And we were in this small little tiny church. I call it the pie church because the way that it was, it was designed by a very famous architect. And people go there just to take tours, just to look at the, the church. You know, in Japan, all the space is very cramped and, and confined because of so many people living over there and their cities are very, very full. So they, they look for any opportunity, any place they can just put a building. Well, this church, when they bought their property, they had a pie size shape like this, not for the lot. I mean, just for just the church. The church had to fit in between like a 7-Eleven and a hotel that was over on this side. And so they just kind of stuck it in, wedged it in the church. So the pie church like this. And uh, where the pulpit is, is in the tip of the pie, in the pointy end. And then where the people sit, they kind of, so like the first pew might be like two and two. Lincoln, have you been to that pie church with me? No, okay. Uh, two and two, and then like three and three, and then four and four. And the, the rows get larger the further back in the pie that you go. And uh, probably the whole thing would maybe only hold maybe 60 people total in the, the pie church. I mean, it's a small kind of wedged in situation. Anyway, uh, one of the last times I was ministering there, the joy of the Lord hit. And it's a real beautiful church. Even uh, from the back of the pie to the front, they got steps kind of going down, wooden steps, all the way down to accommodate everybody. And these pews are like wooden, the old fashioned wooden pews. Well, when the joy of the Lord hit, all the dignity of this beautiful architectural marvel went right out the window. And uh, the pastor had never seen such a thing happen in his church. People were flopped over the, the pews. People were on several steps coming down in the middle. I mean, their bodies were just kind of all over. It was crazy. But there was this woman that came from Hokkaido in the northern parts. And as she was standing there worshiping the Lord... I'm just telling you what happened, and you don't have to believe it, but I'm telling you the truth. As she was worshiping the Lord, an angel came and dropped a heavenly jewel in her hand as she was worshiping. And I'm not talking about just in a spiritual vision. You know, if it happens in a spiritual vision, I think that's just as wonderful. But I'm talking about physically manifested. Now, that's very unusual. So I say experiencing his glory. If we really want to experience his glory, we must prepare for the unusual, the extraordinary, something that will offend our minds so much that we will have to go to our prayer closet to ask God, is that really you? I 
I brought with me today the jewel because she gave it to me. Look at this little Japanese pouch. Okay. Oh, you can't see it there. The Japanese design on this side. This is so strange. Can you see that? Okay. And then you say, and then you say, well, why would God do that? Why would he do it? Ooh, I like Pastor Jason's response. He said, why not? Why not? I remember one of the first times we were hosting a Signs and Wonders camp meeting at our home church in Canada, like 20 years ago. And there was a woman in that meeting. I was leading worship on the platform. Janet was probably sitting in the the front seat somewhere. But in the midst of worship, this woman who had come from the Chicago area, her hands lifted in worship, same kind of thing happened. As she's worshiping, she feels a diamond drop Something that she didn't know was a diamond initially, but she felt something drop in her hand and it was a diamond. And I think there ended up being several that were released during that time. But she took this diamond. She was so thrilled that the Lord had given her this heavenly stone. And uh, she took it and she was telling people about it. Well, in our church at that time, there was a man. His name was Gord Watson. If you want to look him up and ask him about it. He worked for uh, a geological survey type company. He, I mean, he was a gemologist. He went around the world, Australia, all different places to look for gems. Well, he looked at it and he said, there's no way that that is a diamond because diamonds cut glass. And he had doubt and unbelief in his heart that God could do such a thing, especially the fact that it was already cut, like ready to be set into a ring or some sort of jewelry fastening. And so he took it and he told her, he said, this can't be a diamond because diamonds cut glass. And he took it right on the the window of the sanctuary doors. And from the top to the bottom, he cut that glass. (laughs) And Pastor Carl made him pay for it. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) And... uh, Linda, who had received the the jewel, she went back home. She got it set into a ring and she started wearing it everywhere she went. She started wearing this heavenly jewel. And uh, she became the talk of the whole area. And when she was in the grocery checkout line, they'd see her ring and say, oh, that's a beautiful ring. And she said, oh, it's from my best friend. Oh, you must have a really nice best friend. I do. And you know what? He wants to know you. Know me? What do you mean your best friend wants to know me? His name is Jesus. And she would use it as an evangelistic tool everywhere that she goes. She became the Chicagoland area's biggest little evangelist. And uh, so many people got saved and blessed and just touched through the testimony. Now, listen, God knows what he's doing. We must let God be God. Now, there were some people that got real excited about hearing some of these things. And they thought, oh, well, maybe we should go out to the flea market and buy a bunch of gemstones and just throw them all over the place and get people excited about God. You don't need to help God. You don't need to help God. But let God be God. Let the glory come and let the glory do what God desires to do. God wants us to experience his glory. And when it's the glory, we're going to get God's results. We're going to have good fruit. Somebody say God fruit. Oh, yes, we're going to have God fruit. So in the glory, we begin to see. Isaiah said, One cried to one another, speaking of the seraphim, saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. This shows us that in the glory, we can also hear. Lord, open up our ears to hear your glory, to hear your glory. I remember years ago, 
Janet and I going up to the Arctic regions of Canada to a place called Baker Lake Nunavut, which is right in the belly button center of the country, but way up in the Arctic region. And one afternoon, I don't even remember what I was preaching about. But what I do remember is at some point, we began to sing that holy, holy, holy. And as we were singing holy, 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 the angels of God began to sing with us where we could hear it in the room. Their voices above our voice. The, the amazing thing, when the angels sing, they don't have to take a breath when they're singing. It's like when David said, I will continually, your praise will continually be. I mean, the angels literally demonstrate that. The continual praise, just the constant sound of the holy, holy, holy. I mean, just in and out. It's amazing. And again, that afternoon, in that glory, people saved, healed, delivered the glory. About a year and a half ago, my grandma called us. She was asking the Lord to take her to heaven, like for good. She was ready to go. She had accomplished her life assignment, and she was, she was just ready. She was a faithful lady. And... Uh, my grandma called us and she said, I'm already hearing the choirs in heaven. She said, I, I wake up in the middle of the night and I can hear the organ playing. I said, there's an organ in heaven? She said, yes, really, there's an organ. So I can hear the organ playing. I can hear the voices singing. She said, in the morning when I wake up, it's the same song going on. And in the middle of the afternoon, it's the same song. And at night, it's the same song. And she had this where she could hear the heavenly choir. She could hear the heavenly orchestra. Preparing the way, ushering her into the life beyond this one. You know, a believer never dies. We just go from living in this realm to a greater realm of living in the next. From glory to glory. It's amazing. It's beautiful. How precious in the sight of the Lord. Oh. Is the passing of the saints of God. The most beautiful thing. Anyway, my grandma would sing this song to me. I'd never heard it before, but she'd sing it to me. The song she's hearing from heaven. We can hear in the glory. Isaiah said the foundations of the thresholds shook. You know what that speaks to me about? It speaks that we can feel the glory. He could feel the earthquake. He could feel the shaking in the heavenlies. Yeah. There are times when the glory comes so strong, we begin to shake. And you say, God, what are you doing? He's shaking everything that can be shaken. So that the things that can't be shaken will remain. The eternal things will remain. And oftentimes there's prophetic demonstration in the glory. And we have to have prophetic lenses to see, discern, detect what God is doing in those moments. There's times holy laughter comes and we roll. I mean, we roll on the floor. We stumble about like drunken folk. But we're not drunk as you suppose. We're drunk on the new wine of the Holy Spirit filled with his joy, his delight. There's times the glory comes, we begin to weep. We feel the glory. We deeply feel the glory. It moves us to tears. Yesterday, I was getting my hair cut over in Trustville. And the whole time, my hairdresser said, I just feel something so special. And tears started to come. She said, I'm so sorry. I'm beginning to cry. And I said, no, it's okay. It's okay. Just let the tears come. You can carry the glory. To such a degree that people feel God. People feel the reality of his love, his kindness, his compassion, his goodness, his mercy, his grace, his healing power. Isaiah said the house was filled with smoke. Mm, just breathe in. I believe that Isaiah could smell the glory. He could smell the smoke of incense. 
can smell the fragrance of it. Isaiah, or not Isaiah, but is uh, Exodus chapter 30. After it speaks about the anointing oil, it speaks about the incense that was used in the tabernacle. And that incense smells like frankincense. There are times we're in the glory and different aromas begin to come. We begin to smell the glory. The, the frankincense is the incense of the tabernacle. We, we begin to smell. Yesterday, my mother wrote me. She said, what does baby powder mean when, when we're smelling it spiritually? She said, your dad was prophesying last weekend and I started smelling baby powder. I wrote her back. I said, a new baby is coming. Now, you can take that spiritually or naturally depending on the situation. And that's, again, discernment, discerning what the spirit is saying and how he's speaking it. I remember years ago, like 20 years ago, we were in Rhode Island and uh, there was a couple that had asked us for prayer because they were told they couldn't have children. I prayed with them. I went back to the ministry house where I was staying and all I could smell was baby powder, like profuse smell of baby powder. Overwhelming. Like I had stepped right into the diaper itself. And uh, I mean, it was strong. But the Lord uses a confirmation that the baby was coming. For them, it was a natural baby. They had been told they couldn't conceive and they, she couldn't carry. But she conceived and she carried. And she gave birth to that beautiful child. Hallelujah. Whoo. Lift up your hands right now. Lord, we give all of our senses to you. Our eyes, our ears, our feelers, our smellers, our tasters. God, all of our senses submitted to your glory. We desire to experience your glory, God, not just here in a corporate way, but each and every day as we walk through our lives. God, we desire to experience your glory, to know you in your glory, that we might live in your glory, flow in your glory, operate in your glory, and in all that we do, bring you glory. Yes. Yes. So I'm say, I receive it. I receive it. Hmm. Isaiah said, having a live coal in his hand, he touched my mouth. He tasted the glory. Let God put his glory in your mouth. And you say, well, what does that taste like? It tastes like kindness and love and peace and comfort and healing. Revelation tastes like honey. The word of God, we sang about it this morning, didn't we? Yes. Psalm 34, verse 8. Oh, taste and see. Whew, two senses. That the Lord our God is good, blessed, happy, fortunate. To be envied is a man who trusts and takes refuge in him. Psalm 119, verse 103. Oh, taste and see. Oh, that's the wrong one. No, that's not what it... I, I copied and pasted the wrong scripture there. Uh, Psalm 119, 103. It's about your words are like honey. Your words are like honey. Ezekiel 3, verse 3. The spirit spoke to Ezekiel, said, son of man, eat this scroll that I give you and fill your stomach with it. Then I ate it and it was as sweet as honey in my mouth. Proverbs 16, verse 24, pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the mind and healing to the body. There are times when we're in the glory, we begin to taste the sweetness of the Lord. It's a reminder that he's working his revelation in us like Ezekiel. Lord, I want to eat the scroll. I want to eat your scrolls. I want to eat your, digest your revelation so that it gets all the way deep inside of me. Every part of it, that it feeds me, nourishes my body. That I would carry your words and be able to give them and deliver them wherever I go. Your word is like honey. Isaiah 6 verse 8 and I'm going to close here. He said, also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, 
Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, here am I. Send me. I think what we must recognize with all of this glory, the signs, the wonders, the miracles, the revelation, the heavenly transport, his prophetic words of inspiration, everything that God releases in his glory, it comes for a purpose. The all-encompassing vision is given for an all-encompassing mission. The all-encompassing vision of his glory is given that we would successfully carry out the all-encompassing mission that he has called us to walk out. When God comes in his glory, we must steward what he's given. Not saying, oh God, I like the goosebumps, I like the feels, I like the signs and the wonders, just do more of that. Saying, God, you've got my attention. I see you. I hear you. I feel you. I can smell you. I taste you. God, you've got me. You've got my heart. You've got all of me, every part. God, I surrender all. I give it all to you. I yield to the greater purposes of your glory. Here I am. Send me. Send me. Send me. Send me. The reason why God wants us to experience his glory is so that we can be a carrier of his glory, a releaser of his glory, that his glory, the knowledge of his glory would cover the earth through our lives in the same degree that the waters cover the sea. Come on, lift up your hands in this place. Just maybe even stand up in this place this morning. Lift up your hands. And say, Lord, you've got my attention. I want to live for you. I want to live for you completely. I want to live for your glory. God, I desire that my life would be given to your greater purposes. That I would no longer live for myself. But I would live totally for you. That in all that I do. Everything I have. It would be given. For your glory. Here I am. 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 Fill me. And pour me out. As a drink of your glory. Mm. Jesus. Jesus. Come on, just give him praise. 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 All of this is for his glory. All of this is for Jesus that he would be seen, that he would be lifted up, that all men, all women, all people would be drawn unto that brightness of rising. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Pastor Jason. Amen. You know, we have a wonderful privilege to fill the whole earth with the knowledge of this glory. Amen. As you go today, be sure to give away what you've received and you'll receive more in the process. Amen. We'll see you Thursday night. Doors open at six o'clock. Let's all bring someone and fill this place with hungry hearts so we can experience new levels of God's glory. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Have a glory filled afternoon.